This meeting is being conducted in a hybrid format to provide multiple ways for the public to receive information about the project and provide input. This meeting is being conducted in person, virtually through GoToWebinar, and over the phone. The purpose of this public meeting is to explain the project goals, present the recommendations, and hear your feedback on the recommendations. This public meeting was advertised and is being conducted in accordance with state and federal requirements, including Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Public participation is solicited without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express their concerns about Title VI may do so by contacting Jennifer Smith, District 5 Title VI Coordinator, by mail at 719 South Woodland Boulevard, Deland, Florida, 32720, by phone at 386-943-5367, or email at jennifer.smith2 at dot.state.fl.us. That's J-E-N-N-I-F-E-R dot S-M I-T-H, the number two, at D-O-T dot S-T-A-T-E dot F-L dot U-S. You may also contact Jacqueline Paramore, State Title VI Coordinator, by mail at 605 Sewanee Street, Mail Station 65, Tallahassee, Florida, 32399-0450, by phone at 850 850- 414-4753 or email at jacqueline.paramore at dot.state.fl.us. That's J-A-C-Q-U-E-L-I-N-E dot P-A-R-A-M-O-R-E at D-O-T dot S-T-A-T-E dot F-L.us. This information is shown on a sign at the in-person location on the project website and in the meeting notifications. This 25th Street or State Road 46 safety improvements project plans to repave the corridor from just west of French Avenue or US 1792 to Mellonville Avenue in Sanford. Currently, 25th Street is a four lane roadway with 14 foot wide outside lanes and 12 foot wide inside lanes with a two way left turn lane in the middle and five foot wide sidewalks on both sides of the road. As part of every resurfacing project, the Florida Department of Transportation or FDOT is evaluating ways to make the corridor safer. For example, on this project, there are power poles that take up a lot of the sidewalk, making it hard for wheelchairs and bicyclists to pass. Also right now, Bicyclists need to share the 14 foot wide outside travel lane with drivers. Finally, the travel speeds exceed the posted speeds of 35 and 40 miles per hour. This stretch of road is seeing a growing number of crashes and injuries. From 2015 to 2019, there were 335 crashes and three fatalities. Enhanced safety measures are needed to help reduce the chance of serious injuries. The department looked at several ways to enhance safety along the corridor. Before moving forward with design, FDOT provided an opportunity for the community to look at the options and provide feedback through a virtual open house held from mid-December 2021 to mid-January 2022. After considering all comments, the option chosen includes narrowing the outside travel lanes from 14 feet to 11 feet wide, and the inside lanes would narrow to 10 feet wide. To help reduce the risk of the most serious head-on and angle crashes, the project also recommends adding 12 foot wide, short raised medians at various locations within the corridor. Landscaping is also planned along the corridor following the construction of this project. The landscaping, raised median, and the narrower travel lanes will create a neighborhood feel and help encourage safer driving speeds. Also proposed are wider eight-foot sidewalks separated from the road by a three-foot wide sod buffer. Just a reminder, these are still proposed improvements. 
we will consider any feedback we get from the public as we move forward with the design. The proposed medians would help reduce conflict points at intersections without a traffic signal. Conflict points are places where two vehicles could cross paths and potentially collide. A regular intersection can have 18 conflict points that can result in angle, left turn, and U-turn crashes, which can result in the most serious injury. A directional or left turn only median reduces the number of angle, left turn, or U-turn conflict points from 18 to two. If you close the median, the number is reduced to zero. To maximize the safety and operational benefits of medians, FDOT has developed guidelines for how far openings should be from one another based on the roadway's characteristics. Along this segment of 25th Street, the FDOT is recommending closed medians in some areas. That means drivers turning onto 25th Street from the following side streets will have to take a right. Oak Avenue, Laurel Avenue, Magnolia Avenue, Palmetto Avenue on the south side of 25th Street, Grandview Avenue, and Yale Avenue. Directional medians will allow drivers to make a left turn on two side streets, but drivers on the following side streets will have to turn right onto 25th Street, Myrtle Avenue on the south side of 25th Street, Poinsettia Avenue on the north side of 25th Street, Orange Avenue on the north side of 25th Street, and Bay Avenue on the north side of 25th Street. Finally, some areas will have open medians, allowing drivers on 25th Street and on the side streets to make a right or left turn. These proposed locations include Elm Avenue, Palmetto Avenue on the north side of 25th Street, Princeton Avenue, and Willow Avenue. The design for this project is expected to be complete in the fall of this year at an estimated cost of $1.1 million. All work is being done within the existing right-of-way. Construction is anticipated to begin in summer 2023 at an estimated cost of $5.1 million. To learn more about these projects, go to www.cflroads.com. Type the project number 445316-1 in the search box at the top right and click Go. Then click on the project name. Public meeting materials are posted on the website now. We encourage your input and feedback about this project and there are multiple ways for you to participate. All public comments and questions are part of the public meeting record and every method for providing public comments and questions carries equal weight. While comments and questions will be accepted at any time, those submitted by May 27th, 10 days after the public meeting, will become part of the project's public meeting record. All comments and questions will be responded to in writing. To submit comments in person, you may speak to our project staff on the floor or complete a printed comment form and return it to project staff. Written comments may also be submitted on the project website at www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 445316-1. You may also contact the project manager directly by email at samuel.jumber at dot.state.fl.us. That's S A M U E L dot j u m b e r at d o t dot s t a t e dot f l dot u s or by u s mail at the florida department of transportation 719 south woodland boulevard mail station 542 deland florida 32720 you may also call the project manager at 386-943 5244 to provide verbal comments during normal business hours. The contact information is also available on the public meeting notification that you may have received by mail. On behalf of the Florida Department of Transportation, thank you for attending this public meeting and providing your input on this project. 
If you have comments or questions after the meeting, please submit them by May 27th. Contact information, a recording of this presentation, project documents, and other exhibits displayed at the public meeting are posted on the project website at www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 445316 dash one. Have a good evening.